Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Waters. We do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, you can reach Tim every trading day, folks, at ord, O-R-D hyphen oracle.com. That's ord hyphen oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Yeah, if we can uh, take a look at the bigger trend real quick. Okay. Uh, um, not a lot to say here. Let's see. Let me. Oh, good. Okay. Well, anyhow, chart one. Uh, this is uh, uh yeah, this is the monthly. Uh, uh, the second window up from the bottom is the monthly SPX VIX ratio. And the only thing I want to say about this is the SPs make higher highs. If this ratio, the SPX VIX ratio, makes a lower high, normally you're going into some sort of a, at least a short term top and could be even an intermediate term top. And right now, uh, I shaded those areas in pink going back to uh, 2017, 2016. Yes. And right now we're making higher highs on the SPX. Release are up around the highs. And the SPX VIX ratio is also making a higher highs or up at least at the highs. So in the midterm, this is probably not a, a snip on top of any consequence. I'm not saying this week's going to be an up week or not, but in the midterm, it still looks fine. So that's what I wanted to say about that. Nice. Okay. So, so uh, let's go to chart two. Chart two. Okay. Yeah. This is uh, this is kind of interesting, but anyhow, the the middle window is a Zwag breast thrust indicator. Yes. And and uh, I kind of watch this pretty close, and it get, actually gets kind of good clues of what the market may do. But anyhow, to get this Zwag breast thrust indicator triggered, you need a reading below. Uh, point four. Then you need a rally. It's, it's a, actually an advanced decline type indicator, or it's actually an advanced. Uh, it compares the advancing issues against the total issues. So you need a reading below point four, and within ten days or less, you need a reading of, of, of uh, point six or higher. When you get that, that's kind of a thrust off of a bottom. And that's a real good sign. You kind of have a selling climax, a mini selling climax. To a buying climax, if you're going to happen, if you can happen, that can happen in ten days or less. That's usually a good sign here mid term. Okay. And all the red lines that got cross across on this chart, this chart only goes back a couple, couple three years, is the time that it reached point four below, which is selling climax. Then the blue lines are the times that it reached point six, which is kind of a buying climax or, or buying or a thrust, I guess you might say. Yes. Coming off of the October low, you had a, a kind of selling climax into a buying thrust in five days. If you look at the bottom of the chart there. Yeah, I see that. Um, yep, the first one. Yeah, you got five yes. days. That's really a strong market. Right. Uh, so it did the whole thing in five days. Well, we had one also here in, in uh, looks like April, April, May type thing. And it took 12 days. Okay. So still bullish, but not as bullish as five days. Right. So you really kind of had a selling climax and it's kind of a, a thrust, but it took 12 days instead of 10 days. So we're probably not looking uh, the same type rally we had coming off the, uh, looks like about October, November lows of uh, 2023. The market firstly went straight up. So still strong, but not as strong, ideally. So 12, you know, you're probably, you, I think we're probably going to run a little trouble maybe in July or something. I don't know. Okay. But uh, we'll see. But yeah, let's go to chart three. Yeah. Okay, this is the short-term stuff. Um, the top window, or uh, except window, uh, the top window is what's the market statistics. Window below that is the SPY, and we did jump above the previous high of uh, April, of early April, late March, and we gapped above that, and we went back last Thursday and tested that gap, and volume only dropped 5%. You want volume to really go down and test the gap, you like see a, see a 10% drop in volume, not even a 20 or 30% drop in volume. I see. Uh, okay. so, but this is a 5%. So I'm thinking we're going to go back down and test last Thursday's low again. And if, if you look at the bottom window, is, is a VIX. Uh, this is, I drew this or uh, sent this chart a couple hours ago. 
And if you notice the VIX uh, over to the right is kind of a, you can see it better. But the VIX is pretty much setting at its high over the last several days where the S&P is not even close to the previous lows. So right. the VIX leads the SPY. So the, the SPY is already actually testing last Thursday's low or on, on the upside because VIX goes up when the market goes down. Yes. So what that implies is if this indicator works out as it should, we're going to go back down and test last Thursday's low because the VIX is testing last Thursday's high. Yep. No, I can see that. That's pretty amazing, man. Uh, yeah. So last Thursday's high, yeah. folks, okay, was... Uh 12.81, and we just hit that 13.44. Interesting. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep. So, and so you got the volume, you know, you're testing a gap on, you know, it should be 10% lighter volume, just like a gap is, is like a swing point. A previous high or previous yep, low. Right. Works the same way. You want volume 10% lighter, preferably more. And we didn't do that. We had 5%. So I'm thinking we're going to go back down, test Thursday's low. Now, if you get that low on 10% lighter volume, then I will say, yeah, that's probably it. Then we'll start going up again. But I think this week we're probably going to, you know, test that last Thursday's low. So, um, you know, Tim, so what happens there, we'll have to wait and see. I still think the bigger trend's up. So right. No, I, I, I'm with you there. But, but we have some real divergence in this Dow Industrials, you know. I mean, it's it's intriguing that the Dow is way off its highs, man. You know, I mean, and so it's like, okay, I mean, we hit to what? We were at 40,077 and you're at 38,800. Yeah, pretty intriguing. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading uh, down 275. NASDAQ's up 70. S&Ps are up 7.5. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moy, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 293. NASDAQ is up 63. S&Ps are off 9. Okay, Tim, so I have the third chart up here. All right. Uh, I, think, I think we're kind of done with, with that. Okay. So it's, I just think we're going to test last Thursday's low. No guarantees, but, you know, the VIX kind of implies that way, and and volume studies kind of apply that way. We're just banging around. You know, we jumped above a previous high, and I think we're just building a base for another rally is how I'm looking at it. Yes. So um, um, okay. nothing really to add to that. So it's getting where where we need to go here. Let's look at chart four. Okay. I have it. All right. This is this is really kind of, you know, it's slowly developing, but it's a, it's a gigantic trend, I think, changing uh, that uh, it's really be worthwhile. If you look at uh, chart number four, if you look at the bottom window, it's the monthly XAU gold ratio, and it goes all the way back to 1984. And back in 1995, looks about thereabouts. Um, you know, the trend of the XAU gold ratio from 1995 on has actually been going down since then. So that's what 30 years about. Yeah, 30 years, 29 years. Yes. So the gold stocks, you know, they, they had gone up and they had gone down, but that ratio has been going down for that long of a time. And I think and what's going to happen now, the, the ratio is actually going to start going up. And, it, and in my opinion, it could go up for a significant long time. If you look at the ratio again on the XU gold ratio, this basically 2016, this ratio has really just gone sideways. Hasn't really gone, it's gone up a little bit, but it's pretty much gone sideways. And it's really been a narrow range. And I'm thinking we're due for an impulse wave, you know, and I think the yes. impulse wave's going to be up because I got this, um, anyhow, there's, there's some long term stuff going back to actually, I think I got 1909. Ratio's never been this cheap, I put it that way. Okay. So, you know, valuations, I think, does matter at some point. Oh, I yeah. think we're reaching that That's stage. That's for sure. Hey. Uh, so, yeah. So, but anyhow, uh, so let's look at the bigger picture. So I, I got a trend line drawn on the monthly XAU and the XAU gold ratio right now. If you look at that triangle pattern, I guess up to the left part of that chart is 0. 0.63. So let's, let's look at and, and uh, the, the top window is the RSI, but the next window down is inflation deflation ratio. 
And it's another type of indicator that totally different than what the XAU gold ratio is. It's, it's so anyhow, you got two different charts here on the monthly time frame, same and similar things, and it's up against a trend line. So let's look at the blown up views, see where we are. So let's go to chart five. Okay. Uh, the chart five is the uh, daily inflation deflation ratio. I got some other charts on there too. I got GDX and I got XAU. Then the next window up, third up from the bottom is inflation deflation ratio. And I got a trend line drawn down from the, looks like about April 2022. And we're basically kind of running into that trend line. We haven't closed above it yet. But, you know, I'm thinking we, we will here. The reason why is flip to chart six. Okay. Chart six is that HA or the XAU gold ratio. And that trend line, that blue trend line, which is the middle window of the monthly XAU gold ratio, that trend line goes back to 1996. So you can see on a small time frame where we are right now. And that ratio is 0.6, 0.06 rather. And right now, and the month ends uh, Friday. So we got, you know, well, actually counting, today's pretty much over. So we got basically three more trading days for this ratio to hold above point. 0.06. Right now, when I drew this chart, it's 0 0.06, So we're actually above that that trend line, and that's a, a break. You know, we haven't closed there yet, but we need to close there on Friday, and that's a breakout of a trend line going back to 2000 or uh, 1995 or 1996. So I'm thinking that's a, a, a big breakout. And if you notice, gold, which is the bottom window has already broke out. Yes. The trend line looks like a head and shoulders bottom. And I got the XAU, which is above the XAU gold ratio, which is basically the top window. And I think XAU is also broke out. So I'm thinking there's breakouts going on all over, all over the place, and these are on the monthly time frames. The monthlies don't really fail. I mean, there, there are failures, but they're more rare failures than the weeklies, and the weeklies are more, are more rare fa uh, failures than the dailies. All of them, dailies fail the most than weeklies than the, the monthlies. Sure. Once the monthly signal is triggered, most likely that, that's going to follow through. It's not like they they give false signals very often. So I'm, I'm thinking um, these are probably real signals, and these signals are going to last. So let's, let's look at where the momentum is. So those are kind of line charts. So let's go to chart seven to look what the momentum is doing. Okay. So the bottom window is the GDX GLA ratio. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like the XAU gold ratio. I use the GDX GLD ratio because it seems to work better. Yes. And uh, if you look, and this is a monthly GDX GLD ratio. If you look over to the very far right window. I see that. To get a signal, yeah, to get a signal by this chart, you need to close above the mid-Bollinger Band. And this is a monthly chart, so it needs to close above that mid-Bollinger Band on Friday, which is May 31st, and that closes out the month. And uh, then I got, that's, uh, yeah, that's the ratio. So we need to close so far as we're talking today, we're above that mid-Bollinger Band. Next higher window is the uh, monthly accumulative advanced decline for GDX. And the same thing there happens. You need to close above the mid-Bollinger Bands, the momentum chart. And so far, it's way above it. And we go to the top chart, which is the uh, up-down volume. So it measures up volume, down volume uh, for the stocks in GDX. And it also needs to close above the mid-Bollinger Band. And so far... This is momentum now, so you're, you're measuring momentum against the advanced decline and up-down volume. So once these change directions, you know, either up or down, they usually stay in force. There's very seldom you get a, a whipsaw. I mean, it, it does happen, but it's very rare. And, and once you get these signals, you know, the previous signals, you know, they, they can last a year. Matter of fact, this uh, the last time this chart gave a signal was back in January 2021, and it was actually a sell signal. And what that said, there's more stocks up, down, volume down. There's more volume going to the downside than upside, and there's more stocks declining 
been advancing in that period going back 2021. So that whole landscape is now changing. Now you're starting to see more up volume than down volume, and you're seeing more advancing issues than declining issues. And this is going to be persistent over, my opinion, at least for the next year and a half. And it could be, you know, maybe four years. I don't know. But previous signals lasted a year and a half uh, to four years. So Yeah, and you know what's um, amazing, Tim, is that, you know, after that downdraft last week in the gold and silver market, that these are still looking good. I mean, we snapped right back today, but that was that was a that was a fast little downdraft last week. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Stay, stay right there, Tim. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's down two sixty eight. Nasdaq is up fifty six. S and P's down eight. Tim and I are coming right back. Stay right there. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oye, Tom O'Brien. We have the Dow up two fifty. Nasdaq up sixty five. S and P's uh, down five. Uh, so, Tim, I'm on the, uh, what, two, four, six, I'm on the seventh chart. Yeah, seventh. Okay, so this chart kicks in on May 31st because it's the yep. monthly chart. Okay. So if those all those lines stay above the mid-Bollinger Band, then most likely we're starting a, a multi-month, if not a multi-year rally. So we'll have to wait and see what Friday's brings. Nice. Let's go to chart eight real quick. Okay, I have it. Yeah, chart Chart A is just strictly a short-term type thing, and the bottom window is the 18-day average of the uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh, up-down volume. Next higher window is the 18-day average of the advanced decline. <clears throat> yes, and all this is just a momentum, you know, measure the momentum of the advanced decline and up-down volume. As long as those two charts remain above minus 10, the uptrend is intact. And it, it flipped to a, a bullish signal, which is the green area, are times when those both of, both those indicators are above minus 10, and the pink areas are I when see. they're below. Okay. And that this gave a, a buy signal back in, look like, about March 1st. And if you notice, uh, we're still above that uh, line, showing that yes. uh, advanced issues and declining issues is out, or advanced decline is still strong. And the up-down volume is still strong. So this is not uh, even close to a sell signal yet. You need to get below minus 10 for a sell signal. We're holding, you know, close to like about plus 20 range in the vicinity. So my opinion, this rally is not done yet. So how higher short term, I don't know. Um, but it's been going on for, well, since March 1st. So yes. June 1st would be, what, three months? Yeah, and we got a lot of numbers coming out this week, so this is going to get intriguing this week, no doubt, man. Well, Tim, yeah, listen, it's always a pleasure, man. You have a great one, a safe one. Of course, we look forward to speaking to you on Thursday, Tim. All right, have a good one. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Dow, Dow Industrial is down 254. Nasdaq is up 80. S&P is off 3.5, folks. Come back and visit... Uh, Always remember, folks, the bank and Gloria hot out the book and run you over. And thank God, there's always another trade. Come back and visit Tom in tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., folks. Thank you.